Hello and welcome back to Will It Work. Today we're going to take a look at the Hitch device from 2006, a sort of Swiss Army knife for connecting various USB devices together in order to exchange data. It can connect USB mass storage devices, PTP cameras, MTP devices, and even extract songs from iPods. So I'll deal with a little bit of that later, but in this video I'm mainly going to be talking about the core functionality of this device, which is attaching two USB mass storage devices together in order to exchange data. I will give three examples, each one a little bit more complicated and hopefully more interesting as we go along. So let's get started. Okay, so my first example is copying an MP3 file from one USB flash drive to another. So let's take a look at how that works. There are two USB-A ports on either side of the device. So I'm going to plug this one in first. And there it is with the MP3 file on it. And then I'll plug in this one here which has nothing on it. And there's a button down here to switch back and forth between the two. And you'll see on the left the circle that says here. And when I click on the button, the square that says there lights up. And that's the other stick. This is a really neat way to make sure you are where you think you are when looking at the contents of each disk. Back and forth. So if you just copy everything over, it puts it into a hitch folder and sequentially writes different folders as you batch copy things over. If you don't want that, you can actually just choose the folder you want to copy to and it won't create any kind of named folders to go along with it. So let's do that. I'm going to go over to the here device on the right and I'm going to hold in this and I'm going to choose uh, save to this folder and that'll just be the root. And now I'm going to hit the switch button, go back to the here directory, find the mp3 and then I'm going to hit the send button. All right, and now if we go over to the here side on the right, we also have that MP3 player. It's that easy. Okay, on to the next example. Okay, so another cool thing the Hitch did was that it was able to charge an iPod out of either port. So that was pretty interesting for the time and a device of this size that it was actually able to put out enough current to charge or at least revive a dead iPod. So let's see if we can get that to work for bus power devices. I have a USB floppy drive here and one of the newer models of Zip 100 disks here. These are both entirely bus powered. There's no AC adapter. Let's see if the hitch has enough power coming out of both USB ports to fire up these drives and get it to a point where we can exchange files. I have a PDF file on a floppy disk here and we'll attempt to move it over to the zip disk. Sounds like it's firing up the floppy. There's the PDF. The zip disk is coming to life. Look at that. No AC adapters anywhere here. Yep, there's the zip disk. There's the floppy. Okay, let's go to the zip disk and select the root as the folder we want. Go back to the floppy, select the PDF file, and hit send. to the zip. Yep, 
and there's the PDF file. Pretty cool that this small little device, no bigger than an iPod, is able to power both of these drives, keep them up and running, to allow for transferring of files from one to the other. Okay, on to the last example. Okay, what I have here are two Playdate consoles. This is the new little handheld game console from Panic. And one of the cool things about it is that you can sideload games. It's completely open. You can put the Playdate into disk mode and it works just like a flash drive. Plug it into your computer, drag games over into the games folder, unplug it, and you're ready to play. Why do I have two of them, you ask? Well, the first one I got on the left has a slight yellowing problem on the screen, and the good people at Panic sent me out a replacement. Now, I have to send the original one back, but I hope they don't mind if I make this quick video before I mail it back to them. So what I'm going to do is try to take a game that's on the left playdate, that's not on the right playdate, copy it over, and then show that we can play it. So this is my original one, and I have all kinds of games on here. And this is the new one, and so far it only has the initial couple of games on it. There's only two. So let's put them both into disk mode. Okay. Let's do this one as well. Okay, now we'll plug it into the hitch here. All right, let's plug in the other one. There they are, here and there. Okay, so let's go over to the one on the right there. And we're going to tell it we want to save in the games folder. We'll go back to here. Let's go into the games folder here. And we're going to look for a game called Tiny Plane. And then we're going to send it over. Okay, now let's detach this from disk mode. And there it is. Tiny plane game copied over from one play date to the other. Pretty cool. Okay, so the hitch can do other things like attach to a PTP camera and extract the photos from it. MTP devices, which is the successor to PTP that Microsoft came up with. Android also uses, Apple does not, but it includes songs and videos as well as pictures. And it can actually decode an iPod and get the songs out of it you want. Which, if you remember how an iPod worked, they weren't sitting nice and neat in a music folder with their names properly labeled. So that's pretty impressive. There's some problems with all of that though. Number one, I don't have a PTP camera anymore. Technically, the iPhone can work as a PTP camera, but it's poorly implemented and doesn't work with the hitch. I got a later revision of the hitch that had a sticker on it said, now with MTP support, but when you opened up the blister pack, there's a little card in it that says, go to the website and download the MTP update. Well, SEMA is long since out of business, and I cannot find this update anywhere on the Wayback Machine, Internet Archive, anything like that. So if you have it, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to have it. And the other thing is, I don't have an iPod right now, believe it or not. I sold that Nano 7th generation I had that I did a few videos on. So I think if I can get that MTP update and, and get an iPod or two back in, that this is definitely worth revisiting because there's some other really cool features of this uh, SEMA hitch. But that's going to do it for today for this video. I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you are, please like and subscribe. I'll be back soon. But that's all for now. Take care.